this thing rolling? Is it rolling? Okay, it is. So, <laughs> let's talk about PlayStation 5. By the way, if you haven't subscribed or liked or commented, please make sure you comment, subscribe, like, and uh, leave your thoughts in the comment section below about your experience with PlayStation 5. If you have got it, I would like to know what you like and what you don't like. Let's have a dialogue. Um, if you don't have it yet, keep trying, keep trying. Uh, I wouldn't tell you to go buy a console that is worth $499 for $1,000, but if you have lost patience, then go ahead and do it. So let's talk about PlayStation 5. Uh, I've had the game for about a week and I've got to tell you that it's really fascinating. It's, it's really interesting how uh, the PlayStation 5 compares to the Xbox Series X. Uh, as far as size goes, the size uh, is really, it's kind of like what PS3 used to look like. The first version of PlayStation 3, if you can recall, it was, it's really huge. Um, I bought the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition and I bought that because I like when uh, my gadgets are actually um, not really overly visible in my apartment. Uh, it's like somebody coming to your house, someone comes to your house to visit and the first thing they notice is a PlayStation 5. I don't like that. I like my gadgets or my stuff more hidden, more covert, basically. Uh, the game actually lies flat on its belly, or on its stomach, or you can stand it upright. When it stands upright, it actually looks really bold in the living room setting. And when I use it in my office, it still kind of just takes the attention in the room, and I don't like that at all. But again, uh, it's a console, it's supposed to do its job, so you're not really buying it for that aesthetic look, but you're buying a PlayStation 5 or any console you have for the sole purpose of playing video games. The controller, as far as the controller is, the controller uh, really feels tight and bulky in hand. I like how it feels, uh, I like how it looks. It looks really good, it looks so good compared to the PS4 and compared to the Xbox Series X. Still wireless, so you charge it and then, and the battery lasts long. Like I used it for two days straight and it dropped one bar. It only dropped one bar, that is amazing. And I played those games uh, for about, uh, I think an, probably between an hour to two hours. And um, I will switch games and stuff and I will look at the battery and see if it's still fully charged for the first day and it was like wow it was really fully charged then the second day i played games off and on off and on not really consistently but off and on off and on for the whole day so i will play games for three hours turn it off let the console rest turn it back on after like an hour or two play game for like two hours turn it back off let the console rest and then I turned off the sleep mode setting on the game. So I was downloading God of War, Detroit, and other games as well. And the controller was just left on. And then I played some games again. So before I knew it, it was kind of like two days have just gone by. And I checked the battery of the controller and the controller battery was just uh, one bar down. So it had two bars left. That is pretty amazing. For the OS, the OS feels really nice, slick, no, not much going on, very straightforward user interface, straightforward, you don't need to really do much. It's not like the Xbox Series X, that, that Xbox dashboard, although Xbox looks better as far as dashboard goes, Xbox dashboard looks really good. I'm talking from the days of 360, the Xbox dashboard has always been special, but the thing is, the Xbox Series X compared to the PlayStation 5, the Xbox Series X, there is much to navigate with the Xbox dashboard, but with the PS dashboard, it's more straightforward and stuff like that. Now let's talk about the storage capacity of the PlayStation 5. 
that is a problem i'm starting to get pissed off with uh game games that actually give you one terabyte hard drive like is that the best you can do i think more hard drive space should be allocated to playstation 5 especially because games uh new games coming out and future games coming out actually have take a lot of space they actually take a lot of space i'm talking in the hundreds of gigabytes so you have one terabyte hard drive and then you install the os when you get the game and the os brings it down to let's say 760 780 gigs of storage space uh couple that with let's say your recordings which is in the 4k so your recordings will probably be in the gigs as well like one or two gigs for let's say 10 minute video that you recorded on your playstation 5 to share or something like that and then let's talk about the games so nba 2k is around i think 50 gig gigs 60 gigs if you download gta 5 back to experience it on next gen we're talking about a 100 gigabyte of download right there because of all the updates and all the dlcs that have come out if you download call of duty cold war cold war will probably run you about another what um 120 gb something like that because you install all that and then you install shaders and then you <laughs> you install all this uh what they call it ray tracing and all that and then you copy that and install that that is another space taken then you download call of duty warzone that's another like 50 60 gb you download cyberpunk that's 60 gb or 80 gb like it's just crazy how these games take lots of space and you giving us just one terabyte doesn't sit well with me for next gen consoles i feel like hard drive should move on from one terabyte to at least two or even four terabytes and then if you choose to have um an extra hard drive that's on you so my own suggestion is if you're going to buy a digital console the idea of a digital console is you having all your games uh software based not cds if you're gonna have a digital console give me the option to actually buy uh either two terabytes or more so let's say you have a one terabyte digital edition version you have a two terabyte version you have a three terabyte version and so on and so forth if you did that that will make more sense because you find yourself reshuffling games so you delete a game and then you install a new game and then when you're done playing that game you might feel like playing the other game that you just deleted so now you have to delete that game to have space and then reinstall the other game that you deleted does that make any sense and then you have to wait to install like i don't think that's kind of like a pain uh in the a yeah yeah i, I will say that that's a pain in the a so what else do i want to talk about i want to talk about the adaptive trigger functionality that the controller has that is really special really special i enjoyed it when i was playing fifa 21 and madden 21 that was crazy like i could feel every hit i could feel my player get tired i could feel uh throwing the ball on madden i could feel on fifa kicking the ball so let's say you can take a shot and you can feel it if it's gonna be a really hard shot, a really powerful shot, or a really low power shot, or a pass. You can feel feel it if you have actually overpassed it or you underpassed. Like it's just crazy that immersive experience playing with adaptive trigger on. But when I played on 2K, which is a game that I'm really more involved in, uh <laughs> wow. It it's kind of like it's like a disadvantage on 2k because wow um i just didn't like it at all it made me tired because 2k already has that complex control already so the game got me really tired um i, I kind of like stopped playing after 30 minutes and then i just decided to turn off the adaptive trigger functionality altogether and after that i kind of enjoyed the game 
from there. So next, we're gonna talk about uh, what TVs to play your PlayStation 5 on. Now, PlayStation 5 actually comes with a 8K 60 frames per second, 4K 120Hz, uh, HDMI 2.1 cable that actually gives you that high speed data transfer. Uh, most TVs don't really have HDMI 2.1. As, as far as I'm concerned, most TVs have HDMI 1.5. And some TVs tell you, oh, you're buying uh, your 4K 120 FPS TV, but when you buy it, you realize it's actually 4K 60 FPS. I mean, 60 Hertz, my bad. I say FPS, 60 Hertz. And uh, most TVs actually give you more of motion refresh rate than actual refresh rate. So you actually get carried away by the motion refresh rate. And I urge you, if you are buying a new TV, to really look in depth on the refresh rate. Now, it's one thing to have a PlayStation 5. It's another thing to have a TV to play it on. So what I suggest is, if you are able to buy a 4K 120 FPS TV that came out last year or this year, um, there are TVs out there. If you have a thousand plus bucks to spend, two thousand, three thousand, that's good for you. That's good. But if you want to really enjoy, have that really good smooth experience, 4K 120 FPS or 1080p 120 FPS, because 1080p is not really that bad at all. Like I said, I've told people this, the PlayStation 5 is not really, there's not much of a leap from PS4 to PS5. There's not much leap. To me, I feel like it's just more depth of field, more ambient lighting, uh, you know what I'm saying? More VFX effects um, and all that. Just more beefed up kind of from the PlayStation 4. If you have a PlayStation 4 Pro, you can see the different kind of, uh, uh, it's just a little upgrade in graphics. So why not enjoy a full uh, 1080p with high 120 hertz, uh, you know what I'm saying, 120 FPS, and just enjoy that smoothness basically with low, less input lag. So I will suggest that you get a monitor and enjoy your PlayStation 5 on a monitor that will actually give you, let's say 360 hertz or 280 hertz or 165 hertz like there are 4k 165 hertz monitors out there that you can buy for let's say about 900 dollars or seven between 700 to 900 dollars lg is there i think uh, msi is there um what else is there razor is there too and then uh samsung also has great monitors you know what i will do you all a favor i will leave about 10 links up to 10 links of what I think, uh, what monitors to actually look for or look out for if you are in the market to buy a new monitor because uh, I'm trying to save you money. I'm trying to save you money. Um, instead of buying a TV that costs $2,000 and burning your stimulus checks, by the way, we have to have that. But um, yeah, I don't think you should do that. So uh, yeah, TV, it's one thing to have these consoles. It's another thing to actually have a TV to play it on. And until then, uh, until TVs actually are more, these HDMI 2.1 TVs actually became, uh, sorry, get more saturated in the market. Uh, I feel like for now, you should actually play it on a monitor. I played it on my monitor right here next to me and uh, I kind of really enjoy that smoothness. What I didn't enjoy is it's ultra wide and it was really stretchy. So it just stretched out the picture and the quality just really dropped. <laughs> Honestly, it just dropped. Uh, I will do a video on uh, either the Samsung or the CG7 or the BenQ uh, gaming monitor. I, I'm thinking of getting either one of them but Samsung G7 is one to consider. Samsung G5 is one to consider as well. Someone might say, or oh, what about the G9, the ultra wide? Like I said, do not go for ultra wide monitors, bro. You will not have fun with it. Get a curved monitor. Do not go for ultra wide monitor. You will not really enjoy your gaming experience. Trust me, you will not. 
coming from someone who plays competitively. Look, I play 2K on a really competitive level. Uh, I was a legend last year and the year before that, I was an elite three. So I play these games really do. And 2K for me is, is how I judge, uh, is my benchmark for graphics on uh, new games and new consoles. Now buying Call of Duty Cold War and other games, uh, it's kind of, I'm on the fence about that because, mostly because I've played most of those games on PC already. And I don't think I should be repeating uh, buying these games again on next gen. I don't think so. So games like Call of Duty Cold War, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and Warzone, and games like uh, Watch Dogs or uh, Cyberpunk 2077, Mortal Kombat, I don't think I'm gonna get those games again on PS5 until PS5 games come out. So, but games like Detroit, um, based on the fact that I transitioned from uh, PS4 to Xbox, and I was on Xbox for, the, for about two years, and then I'm now transitioning back to PlayStation, so um, I have a lot of Xbox games. And I'm thinking about uh, if, if I could get my hands on a Series X, um, that would be great so I can do a really good comparison video. But like I said, my, my channel, my gadgets are self-sponsored. I don't get these things for free or I don't have these things sent to me for my own review and to send back. I just buy these things with my own money. So yeah, there you go. There you have it. But anyway, like I said, I will drop links in the description for consoles that are at first. I said consoles, my bad, for TVs or monitors that actually won't break the bank, but you will enjoy that full uh 120 fps and uh that high refresh rate with low latency so you're having like 0 0.5 millisecond impute lag you know what i'm saying that that is just the best to have and it's what most gamers that are play that play hardcore gaming most twitch streamers most twitch gamers that's what they use so i'm gonna do that as well so is the ps5 for every man woman child boy girl out there is it worth buying for now my answer is no no it's not really worth it if you have a ps4 pro you're good if you have a ps4 you're good you don't need to really kill yourself about the ps5 right now when it's saturated in the market and it's available for everyone and then bots and scalpers have given us a chance to breathe then you can go ahead and get it but as far as is it just really what the damn thing eh, honestly now that i have it because before i had it i really wanted it that bad but now that i have it honestly i don't see anything special about it like too special about it although uh it's next gen but yeah especially for a guy like me who having pc gaming also i don't really see i'm not overly blown away by ps5 graphics i'm not so thank you guys for watching my video make sure you subscribe like leave a comment let's share ideas tell me your experience and i will and let's just discuss uh in the comment section or you can mail me if you like at thinkinggadgets2071 at gmail.com i will leave that in the description as well so thank you guys for watching catch you guys in my next video why am i holding this ball Peace.